eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Hey guys, Julian here. Got a, another message for you. Hope you guys are doing well. Let me give God the glory. Father God, I give you all the glory for dreams, visions, words of knowledge. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for messages. Thank you for these messages, Lord. Thank you for guiding us, leading us. Holy Spirit, take this message to those that need to see it, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, I cut out every flickering tongue with a double-edged sword against the brethren. And we cut off the head of the serpent. We kick them back to the pit where they belong, to the abyss. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. Guys, how are you guys doing? I got a hot message off the press here. Off the, from the Heavenly Distribution Center. <laughs> um, I was given this on 129, which is yesterday morning. Um, and so the Lord uh, said, get it out there and speak to the young and youthful. Amen. Speak to the young and youthful. And um, he's, he's, the outlook is most of you looking pretty good, I think. And there's some good news here. So please stay with me and, and hear the whole message. So I'm going to start off with the, the message that was given to me, and then I'm going to talk in uh, a little bit and more in depth. My son, this is beginning for the place of worship. You are seeing prophetically the young and youthful believers, those in the family of God, and this is the future of oneself and the church. You will have parental and grandparental influence. You will be under God's protection and wild as war. This is coming and will happen in the future for those not intimate, and not in fellowship in the chambers of their heart. You will be carefree and casual, but it will take leadership with those not intimate. This message is concerning the place of worship in the chambers of your hearts. The influence is growing and becoming stronger. The heart is the mirror of God's word, and it reveals the truth, the true heart. There is a momentary opportunity coming believers those in the family of god those who speak the same language are living by faith but there is a desire to make this known to you they are going to be looking for a rest in a storm my son relate this to the heart of the believer you are waiting and this is the future of oneself and the, the church and the children of god who are the young and youthful. To the young and youthful, you will have parental and grandparental influence, and you will be under God's protection and wild as a boar. You are seeing this prophetically about the young and youthful. End of message. The future of oneself in the church, God's, there's, 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 there's the storm is coming. We're, I think we're there. I think we're at the storm. The Lord told us that the land would be snow clad. Well, right now the land is not snow clad, but it's very possible with a shift of the atmosphere. Who knows? That could all change in a moment's time. With God, anything's possible. In the future, for those not intimate and not in fellowship with the chambers of their heart, what's this talking about? This is talking about people that are not intimate with Jesus in the chambers of their heart. That's why I've been talking to you over and over and over again that you have to worship from your heart. You have to pray from your heart. Your heart has four chambers that the Lord showed me, four chambers. And um, he showed me this in about the temple in Nehemiah and Ezra. So um, he says, the Lord says, you will be carefree and casual. And that's you guys too. All the young and youthful, we're going to be carefree and casual. Why? Because our eternity is going to be sewed up. It's going to be secure. OK, you're going to have a new sense of loyalty to father. It's it's another degree. That's what the Lord is telling me. It's another degree. You're going to have a total degree, total different degree of loyalty. So many of you probably think, man, I mess up so often. I'm right there with you guys. I mess up often, too. Nobody's perfect. And anybody that says they are perfect. Mm, only person that's perfect is Jesus. The father. Yeah, anybody that says they're perfect or even implies that they don't make mistakes, I'm telling you what, there's so many ways to get off the narrow path. And many of you guys that have been on the narrow path, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a very narrow path. It's one foot in front of the other. That's how narrow. 
So the Lord goes on to say, it's going to take leadership with those not intimate. So even with the young and youthful, our mission is going to be delivering God's word. And we are going to be, um, we are going to be delivering God's word to people that are not intimate, people that are angry, people that are just upset all the time. And uh, they're going to be feeling like everything's being snuffed out from under them. But if only they knew to turn to God, turn to Jesus. So the Lord goes on and says, this place, the place of worship in the chambers of the hearts concerning. So the place of worship in, in our hearts. So guys, you know, I've seen people get upset about not having lyrics. I've seen people get upset about uh, not knowing the songs. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if you know the songs. It doesn't matter if you know the lyrics or not of a, of a worship song. You don't even have to have a song to worship. You can go to worship from your heart. You can worship from your heart. Anywhere, anytime. You can make that happen. So it's it's all about the chambers of your heart. Making that worship come from the chambers of your heart to Father. To Father. And the Lord says... That we're all going to be looking for a rest in the storm. That we're all going to be looking for a rest in the storm. And so, um, what does that mean? That means we're all going to go through a little bit of calamity. There's going to be some calamity that we're going to go through. And we are waiting. We are waiting. We are waiting on the perfect timing of God. We are waiting on God's timing and that's all it's 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 you know revelation 3 5 says be an overcomer that's that's one of my that's been one of my prayers for a long time the Lord help me to be an overcomer but listen in Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 through 27 the Lord let me share this with you the wind and wave obey Jesus now in verse 23 it says now when he got into the boat his disciples followed him key and suddenly a great tempest rose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled saying, who can this be? that even the winds and the sea obey him. Now, brothers and sisters, here's the steps to take in the coming storm. First, notice that his, in verse 27, 20, I'm sorry, verse 23, it says, his disciples followed him into the boat, right? The boat can represent the Holy Spirit, but the disciples followed him. We are Jesus' disciples because we have made a decision to follow Christ. When you said, I do, you were automatically enrolled in the Chronicles of Heaven as being a disciple. What does it mean to be a disciple, brothers and sisters? You know this. You guys should know it very well if you're watching my channel. In Luke chapter 9, 23, it's taking up your cross as a daily, daily practice. Read God's word, 10 chapters. A day. Don't miss it. Because when you miss it, you're not armored up. If you're saying that thing where you're saying a prayer and you're saying, Lord, you know, I'm putting on the armor, a breastplate, I'm putting on the helmet of salvation. Okay, that's great. But the Lord has told me this is really armoring up, reading 10 chapters a day or reading God's word daily, washing in his word. You're washing in the word. Pray to Father from your heart daily, daily. It can be an all day thing. Worship Father God from your heart daily. It can be a song. It can be playing an instrument. It could be kneeling down on your on your knees, paying homage, which I recommend you do every day. Holy communion with Father and Jesus is daily, if not three times a day. Do it before you eat. That's a great time to commune with Jesus, to to talk to Jesus. And and, the, and and little infractions and things that you have you know have caused an issue with you, they just kind of melt away. Because and you know why? Because the burden of Jesus is light. And then lastly, 
fasting weekly. Stay with me. Stay with me. But one other thing the Lord wants me to point out right here, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak to me right now, is that this takes time. This takes time to do all this. I hear the Holy Spirit telling me right now, this takes time. Brothers and sisters, listen. If God is your God, if Jesus is your God, he wants your time. And you might say, well, Jules, I, I've got so many things got going on. I've got to watch this program. I've got to go pick up the kids. I've got to do, 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 do. you got all these things you got to do. Then it comes back to beg. I beg the question, what is your God? Who is your God? Who, brothers and sisters, is your God? Is it Father God? Or is it taking the kids to the soccer tournaments and soccer teams and soccer games? Or is it going to the to the races or to the NFL games or the basketball games? What is who is your God? Do you see? You see what I'm saying? Who is your God? Who do you spend time with daily? Is the TV your God? Number two. Number two, guys, the boat was covered with waves. The young and youthful and many others, we are being tested in this coming storm. Tested for what? I want to get into that. We will experience calamity, brothers and sisters. We will experience calamity. And here's the steps to take when this happens. Keep your eyes focused on Father. Keep your eyes focused on Father. If you get worried about something that's happening around you with someone, with whatever, that is you taking your eyes off Father. If someone you love is caught up in this calamity, I'm telling you, give it to Father. Let him handle it. He's going to handle it. <laughs> Remember, we're just on the other side of the veil. We're in heaven. Steps to take. Keep eyes focused on Father, lest you fall. Immediately go into prayer. When calamity happens, get with your brothers and sisters near you if you have any. If not, get go into prayer. Go into prayer. Get down on your knees. Humble yourself and go into prayer. And stay focused. Number three, stay focused on taking up your cross. Don't let that, don't veer off. Make sure you're still praying every day. You're worshiping every day. You're reading God's word every day. No matter what, there is going to be calamity. We are going to experience it. Why? Why? Why do we want to stay focused on taking up the cross? I'll tell you why. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Just as the Spirit of the Lord. Do you hear that? Just as the Spirit of the Lord. That's 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 God's word. That's God's word. It's not Jules's word. Guys, this is God's word. Let it let it be unto you by your faith. Do you see? That's what Jesus says. Let it be unto you by your faith. And number three, his disciples came to him and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Although the disciples were lacking faith, they became personal with Jesus by waking him. By knocking, knocking on the door. Jesus is the door, the opportunity. Knock on the door. Knock on the door. <laughs> One of the best ways to become personal with Jesus is to do holy communion with him daily. In the morning, when you have that private time, before daybreak, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Pour your heart out. I always start off with, Father, thank you for sending your son. For God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Come on, brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? Put it in the comments. Amen. Come on. Stay by his side by taking up the cross. Again, there it is. Luke 9, 23. Guys, I love you very much. I want to see you on the other side when this veil is lifted. I want to see you on the other side. That's why 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, with an unveiled face. We're going to have an unveiled face. We're going to be shiny and bright. We're going to be shiny. We are going to be the chosen. We are going to be the young and youthful. We are going to be the bright ones, as Enoch said. I love you guys very much. God bless you. Stay focused. Now is the time. Dig in. Push in. Don't let the world stop you from achieving this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Julian out.